All right, guys, so we are almost ready to get started on installing our engine casings. That's what we're going to get started on first. But I got to say that T-Rex Racing is absolutely killing it in the packaging department. This stuff right here, there was a crossbar going across from this bolt to this bolt. And this little puck wedged in here, all cased in foam. I hadn't realized it, but the only purpose that that stuff all served is just to make sure that none of this moves around during shipping. That's all it's for. None of this stuff is actually going to get used when you actually install all of this gear. And just so you know, when you're going to get all this stuff out, you're going to want a uh, five mil hex drive. You'll be using that to install some of the, reinstall some of these bolts later. You're also going to want, I think it's actually a nine millimeter uh, size nut at the end of these, but uh, I just used a ratcheting 10 millimeter wrench and that got it off okay. So all the stuff I'm piling up here, this was only used in shipping. All of that, you're not actually going to end up using when you go to install all of this. Instead, what you're going to be using, let me put that back because that needs to be there. There we go. Instead, what you're going to be using, at least on the side that we're going to start on, which is going to be the left hand side, we're going to be using the two included bolts. It's going to go in this kind of orientation. The bolts do come with some flat, uh, flat washers. So if you're doing this outside, be very careful. Make sure you're working in an area that you'll be able to find stuff if it drops. You also have these two spacers. These are not a part of anything. These are just loose. So be careful while you're handling that. And uh, there will be two more spacers that will be zip tied to these other two holes down here at the bottom. So be very careful when you're undoing those make sure that you're undoing them over a table and that you are keeping track of anything that this should have come with when you're done unpackaging this you should come with for the left hand side the casing itself four of these little spacers two of them will be zip tied you should have two of these little uh, i believe they are m6 bolts flathead uh, that hole up there i believe is a four millimeter and they did include another one of these bolts, but I believe this is for if you were installing it on the KTM 390, uh, but it will not be used for the Husqvarna. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first step we have to do is we have to remove a few bolts on the left-hand side of the case. But here are the tools you are going to be needing. Step one, you're going to need an eight millimeter. Now you could use an eight millimeter wrench, but looking at where the bolts are at, you will want an eight millimeter socket. It does not have to be deep socket, although if you have some extensions, that should be okay. Uh, you are also going to need 10 millimeter, but not necessarily for the install. That is just for the unpackaging step. Once you're done unpackaging that, you can take that 10 millimeter and toss it aside. You will not be using that for the rest of the install. You will be needing uh, a five millimeter and a four millimeter hex drive, however. Uh, also, these bolts are going directly into the engine casing, so you're going to want some medium strength blue thread lock. Uh, mine is just a tube that I picked up from AutoZone, I don't know how long ago, but it's still working just fine. So let's get started by removing those bolts on the side of the casing. All right, so there is perhaps one more tool you might need, which is a little red Sharpie, doesn't necessarily have to be red. But I'm a teacher, I have a, bill, a million of those lying around. So, we gotta remove four bolts. I've gone ahead and marked them in red Sharpie to make sure we don't accidentally remove any unnecessary bolts. We're gonna stop, we're gonna start by going top to bottom. That way, if there is any oil that starts to leak, we'll catch it before it becomes too much of a problem. Okay. And those are not in there very tightly, so I imagine 
the torque specs for these bolts has to be quite low. So when we go to tighten these up, we need to make sure not to use too much force, but perhaps plenty of thread lock. And so far these bolts are all halfway out and I'm not feeling or seeing any oil drip out. So that's a good sign that we are safe to remove these bolts all the way without need to, to worry about oil coming out. So if that's a concern, you can put that concern to rest. There is no oil coming out, even as we're moving to the bottom of the pan or the bottom of the case. Okay, let's set these aside someplace safe. We will not be reusing any of them, but there is no sense in us tossing them. They're perfectly good. And in case the next owner wants to remove the engine casing for whatever reason, they'll have that option. So next up, we're gonna take this. We're just gonna start lining up some bolts. I'm gonna start with just the two end bolts. So we got one bolt right here that will go on the top and one bolt over here and washer, which will go along the bottom. Can't forget my thread lock and my spacers. So the other thing, we'll just finger tighten them for the most part, but we are going to need our five millimeter hex in order to actually seat this in all the way. So let's go ahead and get our spacers set aside. My little radiator right here will do a good job holding those for us. All right, they'll even hold the cap for the thread locker for us. Just a little, little line of thread locker going on there. Good. And good. That's all we need. Just a line. If you've never used thread locker before, it doesn't take much. One line is all you need. You no need to like coat the entire bolt. So this bolt goes here after I put my spacers on. It's okay if you get a little bit of thread lock on the spacers, it's not gonna hurt them. There, so see, plenty of thread lock still. One here, and one down here. And like I said, we're just gonna finger tighten these as much as we can at first tip to getting them lined up is if one doesn't seem to be going in, go counterclockwise at first. Once you feel a click, go clockwise again, and you should not have any problems anymore. There we go, these are going in nicely. Good, I remember this bolt, the nut that came with it took a little bit of uh, persuading to get all the way off, so that's okay. Okay, so far, so good. But these are kind of long bolts, so it's gonna take me a minute. Let's go get the other two bolts that we're gonna be using, as well as the spacers. Flathead bolts and spacers. So, just one at a time. We're gonna go ahead and line up my spacers first by reaching up behind there. There's one spacer and the other one right through this hole. There, that's why you don't tighten these two bolts down all the way. Otherwise you won't have space to fit those spacers back there. Once again, a little bit of thread lock for each of the bolts. There we go. And we thread these back in. Now, obviously those flat heads we can't really get a good grip on. So we're gonna go ahead and swap out my uh, socket drive for my hex drive. We can also set aside my thread locker 
until we need it later. We are actually going to need both of these because the two bolts at the end, well, hmm, it's just now hitting me. Perhaps I'm using the incorrect bolt after all. Hmm. We'll tighten these down gently and see, uh, see which bolt that stops going first. Whichever bolt seems to be giving us trouble, we'll swap out for that one. Which if I had to guess, it's gonna be that top, top bolt right there. We're not gonna tighten down every single bolt all the way. We're just gonna tighten down until it's no longer wobbly. But uh, there is no reason for us to get this all the way tightened. There's no need in us stripping a bolt this early in the installation process. Matter of fact, I know that with cars, it's good to do things in a cross pattern and only tighten down a little bit at a time. I'm not entirely sure how necessary that is with us only removing four bolts from the engine case, but I feel like that would be a good practice regardless. And you know what? Just because I'm feeling uneasy with how snug this bolt is feeling already, we're going to go ahead and swap this with the shorter bolt and see if that doesn't alleviate our problems. And if this alleviates our problems, we know that we have been using the incorrect bolt, and that's okay. We caught the mistake early before it caused any damage. Nope. This bolt is absolutely too small. That is not the correct size for us. So back in with this bolt, still has plenty of thread lock. So we'll just keep threading this in. We now just know this bolt is just really snug. I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but the reason we're only using our small ratchet is because these bolts are not torqued in there very high at all. Unless I am mistaken, these are all aluminum parts. It is very easy to strip and damage them. So it's important not to, not to impart too much torque on any of them at any point. So for example, right now I'm just kind of using my index finger to torque it down the rest of the way. And once it feels snug, I'm stopping. That'll do. I would rather this take a little bit longer than necessary and make sure that it is done correctly and safely than rush and end up needing to uh, run to the dealership tail between my legs asking them to fix my horrible mis mistake. Okay, we're already feeling pretty snug. So we're just gonna do another couple twists here and there. Nothing too crazy. That's it. And our engine casing for the left-hand side is secure. Wonderful. Let's take a look at the right-hand side next. So similarly, the right-hand side is going to have a couple of bolts in the casing that must be removed. And looking at it, Perhaps this one bolt actually belongs over here. It was loose in the packaging and looks like it's about the right size, so we're gonna assume it belongs on that end. Uh, I believe it has a diagram over here, but if we take a look at that diagram, it doesn't look quite the same. This is showing a picture from the KTM RC390, hence we see that white cover right there, and it mentions removing a fairing. Uh, fortunately for us, we do not have a fairing on this bike, but it does look like we will remove three bolts. And those bolts are going to be eight millimeters as the other side was. So eight millimeter socket. We're gonna go ahead and get this stuff off. And it's going to be, hmm, which, which bolts? Let's mark them just to be safe. Better safe than sorry. 
better that we mark them and make sure we know which bolts are coming off than get one of the bolts wrong and end up wasting some extra time. So these two bolts, and we can see that's holding down this cable, so we're going to have to be careful making sure this doesn't move while we're working. Okay. We got our bolts marked. Put away our, put away our marker. And we'll set this aside. Careful not to let any of those bolts fall. And get to work. Okay, these two bolts are already considerably tighter than that other side. Okay. Yeah, and like the other side, this bolt, which is only in the casing, is coming out super easy already. Or it was coming out super easy. Yeah, I spoke too soon. This side is quite a bit tighter than the other. Of course, part of that could just be the casing is right here, and I'm doing doing a uh, a terrible, terrible thing in rubbing this socket up against it. That's okay, though. That is okay. With the, when the casing's on, we're not going to be able to see this part, so if that gets a little scratched up, we're okay. Okay, I'm not even going to remove them right now. What I'm going to do right now is go over and grab the uh, attachments that I know I'm going to need for these bolts. Okay, we're done with that 8 millimeter socket. But now, we're going to need my 5 millimeter and my thread locker. Now again, just to save some time and because I know I got to watch those two bolts the whole way through, I'm going to take some time to actually apply some thread locker on these bolts now. And you'll notice the right hand side does not use any spacers. Well, that, that does seem odd to me, so I'm gonna take a look at the directions once more as, as well, just to be sure. Wouldn't wanna get started and then find out that there were some spacers that I am simply missing because it seems odd that this one, at the very least, won't have any spacers. So, let's take a look. Alright, best as I can tell from the directions, no, there are no washers for this side of the engine casing. So, we're going to remove these two bolts now. Set balance down on my knee, making sure those bolts don't tip out. Okay, there's one. Pushing this firmly so that way it doesn't move on me. Okay. So we're going to just hold this still when we get this lined, it, lined up. Okay, one bolt is in. Two bolts are in. Three bolts. Are all, ooh, I don't know if that camera got that. <laughs> so we got one, two, three bolts all lined in and where they're supposed to be. So we're in good shape so far. Let's get these seated, not all the way threaded in, but just kind of get them started just with our bare hands. All right, we have our engine casing, and that feels quite sturdy. I feel good about I feel good about my uh, my little linkage here being protected now. I'm liking this. Next up, we're going to be getting our uh, what's that called? Skid plate. We're going to be putting our skid plate on next, but I'll be breaking this up into two parts videos because I don't know if people really need to see both. So, recap. We've got our 
engine sliders. You're going to need a 5 millimeter uh, hex. You're also going to need a 4 millimeter hex as well for two of the bolts that are on the left hand side. You will need an 8 millimeter wrench or socket to remove, uh, I believe, one, two, three, seven of these 8 millimeter bolts along the engine casing. No, oil will not come out while you are working on that, so do, don't worry. It is beneficial to have a Sharpie with you so you can mark which bolts you are removing. You will be wanting some medium strength, so blue thread locker to reinstall these bolts. They are going into a very vibrate, vibrate part of the bike. So blue thread locker will help immensely. And you will also need a little bit of time and patience. Not all of the parts that were included with these will be used on the Husqvarna Svart Pillin 401. And that is all. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more that, if you want to see more stuff just in general on, about me doing dumb stuff on my Svart Pillin, then why not subscribe? New stuff comes out every week. Usually it's a ride along, me just riding around town being an idiot. Or every now and then there'll be some informative stuff, installing some of these frame sliders or exhaust sliders, for example. Uh, stay tuned for the next video, which will be coming in a week's time, and that's going to be the skid plate. So in the meantime, I'm Matt. Have a good one.